Right, so what I'll do, um, I'll just talk you through what we're going to do and um, the, the plan for the next couple of hours, because I, I want you all to be involved with this. If there's stuff that you're like, nah, let's not do that, I'll, I'll totally understand. Um, so we're going to do some intros and some icebreakers, simply because if I don't get you to talk at the start of the meeting, the chances, and you're a quiet person, chances of you getting to talk later are zero. So I've got to get you to talk at the start. Um, we're then going to go through some stuff on the business rules. Um, I've got some quick questions to ask, which should take us about five, ten minutes. Then I'm going to talk about NUBTIG or MPTG. Um, ask you a lot of questions about that and if you use it. Um, I'm going to go through what is in NAPTAN and ask you some questions, especially about the CSV files. And then I'm going to talk through some of the stuff that we've got coming up in the next things and what might be happening in the next kind of six to eight weeks. Does that sound fine? Anyone see any red flags or problems with any of that? Fine. Cool. No. Cool. So what I'm going to do is instead of me trying to do this in some kind of random way, I'm just going to go through the participants list in alphabetical order because uh, that's the easiest way of making sure I don't miss people. Um, and if you give your name, your pronoun, who you work for, did you also come to the uploaders group and uh, bus or train? Very simple question. Do you like, do you prefer to travel by bus or train? So, hi, I'm Dr. J. I use they as a pronoun. Um, I work for ThoughtWorks and I'm a consultant and we're currently working with the Department for Transport on the NAPTAN project. Um, did I also come to the uploaders group? I run these groups, so yes, I did. And do I travel by bus or train? In the centre of London, I travel by bus, but if I'm going anywhere more than the zone one that I live in, I travel by train because I like a I like a nice train journey there. But it's still very exciting because I didn't really have trains when I grew up. Um, so moving along onto business rules. Now, some of you will have seen this before. This is why I wanted to ask what I'm trying to understand for the people who download the data. So I'd really like the people who are downloading and using NAPTAN data to put their voice forward here is I'd like you to rank these groupings of the rules, the business rules. So what we've done is we've gone out and we've found the 131 documented business rules that we could find that are beyond just the what's inside the XML for making sure that the data is correct. These are things like the common name rules, what the indicator is, the bearings, the localities, the SMS details, all of those things. Now, I'd really like the people who download the data um, to look at those different groupings of rules and ask questions if you need and put them in a strict order from most useful to least useful across the page here. So you should just be able to pick them up and drag and drop them. Um, and let me know if you've got any questions about the groupings or what's inside there. I will do my best to answer. So we've got about a minute left. Is everyone kind of making sense of these? Does anyone have any questions? Um, one question would be, is that co code in there or is that just assumed? Because that's the, uh, um, there are various codes, referencing systems you can use for these um, stops. Um, um, yeah. There is one there called Ecto Code slash admin area. Okay, we've seen that uh, one's the Ecto Code. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it means something else. Um, but with the, I don't know if anyone knows. So, if it's, so hmm, yeah. Sorry. So what we did is, and um, it's totally fine. We're we're gonna we're preparing something to send out to both groups. We but we we wanted to get everyone. We wanted to finish these before we sent it out. Um, t t to get a lot more information on it. We grouped a number of the rules together because getting you to rank 131 things is going to be really difficult. Getting you to rank 12 things is a little bit easier. Got it. So we put all of the rules together. That So all of these are, are about a grouping of rules and what, what they're about. So there is one there called Acto Code Admin Area. Brilliant. So Thank you. no problems. I have a question. So, I Certainly. Um, 
what's the difference between or what, what what's the implied difference between non bus stop types and bus stop type um so bus stop types there are um and the person who who helped me the business analyst who helped me do this um isn't here so i'm having to do this from memory the bus stop types are things like hail and ride um the standard wavy bus stop okay. uh, a bus stop and the non-bus stop types are things like this is a ferry terminal this is an airport yeah. this is a railway station that's fine does non-bus stop types include trams as well yes okay fine thank you so so it was we split it that way because uh, there's some rules around what bus stop type datas can have because some of them have timings on them yeah. um which trams and things like that don't seem to have yeah that's right okay thank you no problems so if we so if we start off talking talking this through the thing that we think is most useful and does everyone agree that it's the location geocode is the thing that's most useful Is there anyone who disagrees with that? That's Bonza. Um, ben, it looks like the, the thing that you've said is the next most useful thing, and I'm just going to try to line these up in a little forced ranking, would be bus stop type. So this is what sort of bus stop it is, whether it's a standard one or it's a hail and ride or it's a I can't remember any other bus stop types, but somebody will undoubtedly remind me of them. Um, is do we agree that that's the next most useful piece of piece of business rules for making sure that you have got data that's up to the standard that you need? Not for us, I'd say it wasn't that important. No, I think I dragged that over early on, thinking that that was a type of stop as mm. opposed to, yeah. So, so is locality, which somebody's just moved across, is that slightly more, I'm going to play more or less, and we'll just uh, just keep moving these around until I get a nice line of them. So locality looks like it's going to be the next one, which is, um, is this based in um, Chesham or Amersham, two towns that I occasionally drive through, even in, even in this times. Um, so is it because there's, Chesham Boys in the middle as well. So if you want to get to Chesham Boys, that's the locality um, that you that you know you want to get to, but it's a couple of miles around. So you need to know where the bus stops are within that because you don't want to end up two miles from where you actually want to be. Does that is that the next piece of information that works? Again, not for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, we, we use Oop. a bit of locality data, but mainly the next thing for us probably would be common name because we need to common name. display to the users what the stop is called. If it would be common name or it would be the actual the code. Yeah, the ACO code, that's yeah, that's really, okay. that's, that's so, really important. Actually, we can't we can't do anything until we have an ACO code, so that probably should be at, at the beginning. I, that's so, really aligning with what I thought as well. I've got kind of six things that it's the data is almost useless without. Um, and after that, they will, uh, they've, they've come ranking and those yes. top four, my top six. So at Co code, location, common name, locality. Um, I also have What's this, the other two. Uh, I also had personally had stop type just to be able to differentiate the bus yeah. and the track and everything. And the final one actually probably is probably goes underneath, which would be indicator. So, uh, but I, don't, I think those top five would be like, um, you know, indicator. If I, if I had forced to rank it, it'd be below those top five. Personally, I know everyone's got different views, but I think without those top five to the right there at the top, I couldn't really do anything. No, we're the so same. The, so, so stop point type is more important than bus stop type. You or are they equally have, important? You might, for me, you might just have to run through the difference again, just because, uh, just to be quite clear. I, the thing that's important for me is to know it's a bus stop rather than a tram stop or a ferry stop. Yes. Same for us. We need to distinguish because we switch icons or have different information depending on whether it's a bus or tram stop. So yeah, a, a stop point type is um, 
whether it's a ferry, a tram, a railway station or a bus, um, bus stop type is if it's a bus, it can have three or four different types, letting somebody know kind of the behaviours that they have to display at the bus stop. Um, um, or whether there's not actually a physical bus stop there, but along this piece of road, you can wave your arm at the bus and it, and it will stop. Okay, for, for me, that top row of the six look like the absolute, pretty much the core ones. I could probably get away with that indicator, but those those top, there's certainly the five to the right in that top row are the absolute core ones. Um, yeah. So if I then moved these over the side, for 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 everybody, these these other six are these kind of equally equally unused, or are they? Is there some ranking? Is there something inside there that's of use to anyone in particular? What what stop area inaccuracy? Um, that is where there's you can have an area of bus stops, for example. Um, I'm just going to use Chesham because I've been looking at it um, to try to get the stuff into my brain. Chesham has like a little bit of a city centre and there's some bus stops within the city centre. So the stop area is the city centre because you know that if you if somebody's trying to get there, they're trying to get into that central part of the town. So it's saying I've got an area and I've got a bus stop that should belong there, but it's actually, I've accidentally put it a mile away or something like that. That's kind of what I'm understanding of it, but somebody who writes these will possibly pipe up and tell me I've got it slightly wrong. Um, here's a question. Does anyone have stats on the SMS usage and SMS functionality of your systems. Do you use the SMS at all? Yes. Um, I guess um, I guess in West Yorkshire we've got uh, we we monitor how many people actually use the SMS but I guess these days now people have got um, internet access so we we get an um, internet hits for, for, for bus stops and also we have QR codes at each bus stop now, so we get hits for those as well. So we know how many people um, use that in, in West Yorkshire. So that that's kind of lovely. important to us. That would be lovely to talk to you at some point about how many people are using SMS still and just really understand that, because there's quite a lot. You see that there's 12. It's quite a big grouping of the... Um, of the rules and it's just trying to understand the value of those and the value of the SMS for your users. So that would be grand, Andrew. Uh, that was uh, Andrew, wasn't it? Yes, yes. that was Andrew yes. Guadalupe, was yeah. Cheers, cheers Tim. There, there, there are the SMS codes on, I would say, most bus stops across the country still. Um, and whilst the use is declining, there is still a national travel line service for it, which still receives um, quite a lot of, uh, of traffic, more than you would think. And the rules think, are quite complex. Yeah. yeah. I, I think one of the things, Tim, is to understand how we can monitor that and measure it so that we can see if it's declining or not. And understand when when that service is dead so that we're not putting leaving things in when it's when nobody's actually using it i think that's part of our thinking um david yeah i'm just going to say that a lot of the operators use the sms because the only mapping they've got is google and google still right. uses it ah so so stupid quick question and excuse me, my my ignorance. How does does Google download Naptan, or does Google hook into somebody? And is somebody going to own up the fact that they feed they feed um, Google? Eto uh, feed Google. Eto feed Google. Yep. I just use SMS. Uh, Google. 
cool. Just making a note. Um, so with the other five that we've got there, I've put SMS down as least useful, but it's actually probably not. Um, with these yeah. six, is there any order to those or are they just kind of a little bit in a blob? Um, Ian and then David B. Yeah, there's a quick one on the SMS as well. There's a number of uh, bus station departure systems that use the SMS code rather than the ATCO code. So it's not something they'd want turning off straight away. Cool. Thank you, David. Uh, Ian, sorry. Yeah, so my other point was going to be about the bus stop types because it's part of um, the BOD's checking purposes that you have a principal timing point and the right sort of bus stops in your services now, which it didn't used to be. Aha. Uh -huh. So they are also checking the timings on the bus stops. Is that correct? Well, oh, it, it's the stop type and the, the timing um, classification of it. But um, so the timing classification, the operator can change, but the stop type needs to be in there so that NAPTAN can, uh, so that BODs can validate it. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's good to know. Right. Um, I think think we've kind of covered it so we've got the five that we really the the five that are most needed or the six that are most needed in in order from most useful to least useful on the right and then on on the left we've got a bit of a blob of the other six which are useful we just don't really have an order for them is everyone okay with this Ian, and I'm just guessing that's a legacy hand, Ian. Yep. Cool. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to ask you a couple of very quick questions. So very quickly, uh, we're focusing on, on the left hand side first. Do you sign in to download your data? And if if you do, what feature do you like most from the signing in part compared to the anonymous downloading part? Just let me know or type something in. Um, I'll give you maybe two minutes to put some put some stickies up there. Focusing on the left hand side, but you can also answer the right if you really feel like it. OK, we've got about four seconds left. We've all focused on. The data that we link to. Um, so I'm just going to quickly ask and do a poll of a verbal poll of the people who are downloading data. Do any of you log in to download your data? Um, I um, I don't log in personally, but um, my colleagues in our data team um, log in and download um, NAPTAM data for West Yorkshire. Yeah, I can confirm that we do it as well in the travel systems department. So and that's because you just need the ones for West Yorkshire. So you're using the filter facility. We yeah, we use the preferences. So uh, inches for what we we do. Um, we we'll probably pick about, I don't know, 22 of the file, 22 of the NAPTANs. Um, down with them. I just couldn't get my sticky note under, under <laughs> signing. <laughs> That's totally fine. Um, Mark, Taylor. You've got your hand up. Sorry, I'm a microphone off then. Um, yes, I use the preferences when I on the odd occasion that I do download data. And are you, are you using that to limit what you're downloading? Yes, because it's normally an adjacent authority that I want the information for. I've got all mm -hmm. our information. It's it's just the surrounding areas. So limiting um, it is very being able to limit it is very useful. It's that's that's really good to know. Uh, is there anyone else? So 
for all the people who are doing like um, base math and ticketer and things like that, just grabbing two names from my list of, na of, of, of names, you're downloading all of the information or are you using the URL and doing the little pipey thing between it for your automated systems? Dan. Yeah, so uh, we've got a direct link. We just download the whole CSV. It does it automatically part of a build process, though sometimes we do go in and do a manual download just to, just for a bit of sanity checking to make sure mm -hmm. the two things are working in the same way. Um, so that's part of our own internal checks, but generally we just use the automated because we're only interested in national data sets. So, uh, yeah, we don't need the localised stuff. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Alex R. Yeah, same for us. So we take that we take the whole data set every night and import that if there's a change to the file that's really good to know um uh, adrian um, is now a bad time to ask about the the csv and the contents of it jay or uh no that because that? that's what i'm going to get to but it's not something okay. that we're going to get to now because i described the order of which we're doing things Hi, or welcome to my life. Adrian is my pr product owner who, does, who, who listens to me less than my customers. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we get on quite well, by the way. We did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, could I now, ask a question then about the, the automated download? When you say you just run a download, what what process is that actually is actually happening for that to work? Te technically, we run a cron task at I think three a.m. every morning that checks whether there's a change. I think there's an e tag on that file, a header e tag that we check see if it's changed, and then we download a new version of the NapTime file if it's available. Okay. We we just uh, just download the data no matter what. Uh, every time we do a build of data. So mm -hmm. it's just part of our process is to, is to purge the, the our stop table and repopulate it uh, with the latest data. So we do that every single time. OK, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, that's a plus one from Mosaic Transport API as well. We just have an automated download, download the whole thing, and um, there's really no benefit to filtering it. It's uh, quick download times, and the, the, we can extract what we want uh, very quickly. That's great. Um, so. Alex, I'm assuming that's a legacy hand. Just let me know if it's not. Yes, yeah, sorry. That's OK. I'm just going to run on to the other parts and just make sure that we've got all of these together. So do you link NAPDAN data to other data sets? Yes, because it's useless on its own. I understand that. Um, so what have we got? And I'm just trying to understand. So we've got in NCSD coach data, TNDS, which is other modes of data, Ordnance Survey Road Data, ATOC Data for Trains, uh, ATOC, ATCO SIF. Could somebody help me understand what ATCO SIF is? I can take that. Uh, so ATCO SIF is a legacy format that was before Trans Exchange. Uh, there was a format that is a, effectively a flat text file that's used to record data. It's actually, uh, we provide uh, data in that format and it's still one of, one of the most popular download formats that we've got uh, for that as well. Uh, lots of people still have to even switch to Trans Exchange and yeah so we we effectively uh, put timetable information into Atco SIF. Fantastic that's that's really really good to know. Um, open street map, Trans Exchange we take NAP10 as a baseline and supplement with TXC stop points. Uh, TNDS, TXC, I'm assuming that's the same as TNDS. Operator yeah. specific trans sorry. exchange. Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to talk over. Yeah, no, that's fine. Just just exactly that. that the format is trans exchange, but the data set is the uh, travel line national data set to TNDS. Oh, so travel line national data set. National data set. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting so good at acronyms. Um, BODs in the future, TFL stops. Now, for the person with TFL stops, can I ask a question? What's different between TFL stops and what's NAPTAN? 
Um, Transport for um, London just maintain their own slightly different data sets um, for uh, for their schedules and a whole bunch of things. And we just cross-reference against Transport um, for London um, API as well. I'd have to speak to the engineers to know exactly um, what the flow is um, and indeed if it is still uh, current. But I know that um, our full flow used to be, uh, to get the full stop information, we used to get some, we used to have a, a priority ordering of, um, look in that time, look in the trans exchange, um, look in TFL stops data, and even look in OSM as well. So these are the kind of four sources, and we had a priority according to which one we trusted most. Uh, so I'm no, not, fit in. Uh, yep. yeah, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how TFL stops fitted into the flow, other than it, it was in our workflow to check and see if there are any differences. That's that's really good to know, really good to kind of understand the complexities that you're playing with there. Um, so, is there anything else anyone wants to tell me about how you're linking things across data sets? The, the only thing I would mention is that ACCO code has become our primary referencing system. Uh, everything else is kind of secondary. So, it's kind of your, oh, what it, what it, it's kind of your ID for all of the records is your ACTO code. Yeah, it's like the uh, it's almost like the Rosetta Stone. It's the thing that you can always come back to. Oh, uh, should always right. be able to come back to and reference off. Um, and uh, if using anything else, you just tend to get some gaps or holes or things you can't cross reference. Um, can I just check with all the rest of the people what are using that term data? That ACTO code is your kind of key key data thingy, uh, unique identifier. That was the word I was after. Unique identifier. Yes, for us. Thank you, Mark, Ta Mark Taylor, and then Dan. That's what it was set up for. That's supposed to be the unique identifier. That's its purpose. Unequ mm -hmm. you know, unequivocal. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Dan. Yeah, just determine that it's effectively our primary key. Effectively, it's what we use to link to every other data set. It's the it's a real uh, glue that holds everything else together. Which is why it's so the rules around that are so important to get right. There was I just wanted to double check and make sure that our assumption that it was everyone's primary key was correct. So I'm not going to ask you some questions. We've got about an hour left, an hour and a half left. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions about NubTig. Now, NubTig is an interesting little thing, and I've taken a screenshot of the area around where I live, which has a whole pile of different, I live in Southwark, but it's got an area called Southwark within Southwark, um, just to be really annoying, which is in Borough and Bankside, uh, to be even more annoying because it's with it's outside of an area. Um, I want to understand from a downloader's point of view, how useful NubTig is to you. Um, so if you could kind of put whether or not you use it or you don't use it in building your database, but also any thoughts you've got about it as to whether it's it needs extending, it, it's too complicated, it's not complicated enough, and whether it gives you what you need. Just trying to understand that. So I'm going to put a little uh, five minute timer and just give you time to put some your thoughts up on stickies and then we'll go through it. Right, so that's time. So I'm just going to go through the stickies on NubTig and ask for any extra feedback. And I'd really <laughs> like to hear some of the downloaders and developers' thoughts on, because NubTig is so key to how NAPTAN works, but just trying to understand, is it key just to making NAPTAN hold together, or is there value in NubTig in and of itself? So uh, we update it in West Yorkshire County Authority, not developers. Use it if I need to add a large housing, a new large housing development. Occasionally use it to, only use it occasionally to update my database. Uh, yes, we use it, it gives us what we need and still important for some journey planner functions. So can somebody help me understand um, what its use is um, within your databases or within your data. Andrew. 
Um, yeah, so I guess within our data, um, we're able to edit um, existing localities and we're able to create new lo localities in, in MPTG NUPTIG. We're able to do that. And so just that we know our stops are in the right places, but then again, we're not developers. So uh, I guess they will be able to tell us if it's if it's any value. It's, it's good for us because we know our our stops are in the right places. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Lisa. Lisa Hi, uh, G. Yeah. Um, so I use I use it at West Yorkshire also, but um, I use it in the real time database to um, generate um, buyers for a service um, and these are like viewed at bus station but these buyers are based on um, the localities. So a buyer is that I'm traveling to somewhere via somewhere else? Yeah yeah basically but these are like just dynamic buyers so it'll only show the appropriate buyers at the appropriate point. Okay cool. Um, is there anyone else who's using the NubTig data um, that comes through? Tim. Uh, yeah, we've we've not got any journey planner suppliers on the call, but um, the likes of Trapeze and Mens um, use NubTig as part of the journey planning algorithms to help people right. um, get from A to B, because most people don't say, I want to go from that stop to somewhere else. They're going from either an address or, or a place, and NUPTIG more often than not will provide that place. So it's cool. That's that's really helping me understand the the role of localities within this. So localities are all about the place where I want to be and the the area where I want to be um, end up is Southwark within Southwark um, and Southwark station is quite different to the centre of Southwark so it's about understanding where those things are. Is Have I understood it correctly now? Yes. Fantastic. I know it might feel like we go over some of these things quite a few times. Right. Now, we're going to go on to the information in NAPTAN and in the NAPTAN CSV, but I'd like to, we've got, we've been going for about an hour. Um, I did my back in on the weekend slightly. I won't even, when I got stuck, I had to try to push it shut. I ended up having to get somebody to come over. Just an entire nightmare. I need to go and stretch for two minutes. Would everyone else like to take a little two minute break to stretch and all of that, and then we'll come back. So we'll come back um, at 25 past. That'll give us just a couple of minutes to stretch, move, do those kind of things. And then we'll come back and we're going to go through what information is in the NAPTAN CSV and what's the most useful part. Make sense to everybody? Sure. Cool. We'll be right back. Right. Back in the room. Hopefully everyone's returned and is feeling well, if not refreshed, at least stretched out. Um, so um, I'll just wait for confirmation that people are in fact back in the room and you're not, I'm not talking to a whole pile of muted mics. Hi Dan. Oh, oh good. That was all I needed. Thank you Dan. Um, so what I'm going to do is I downloaded a NAPTAN CSV file and it contains 17 uh, subfiles within it when you unzip it. And what I want to understand is what is the most valuable file in there for us to start looking at? What's the most valuable information? Because what we don't want to be doing is putting a lot of effort in only to find out that in building this one and trying to test it with people, it's not actually one that you're going to use. And we'd rather do it on one that everyone uses and then we can do lots of testing and then work our way through. So we're not getting rid of any, we're just looking at the ones that we focus on right at the start. So what you should be able to see is a little uh, square with a couple of axes on it. 
So it's priority versus timeliness, AKA what can I wait for? So at the top is what you need. And at the bottom is stuff that, yeah, it's okay to have. And then on the left hand side, daily or more, I want this information all the time. I want it updated and I, I, I have to have it. And then monthly or less on the right hand side. Does this make sense to everybody? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call out a CSV file and I'd like people to put a sticky with the name of that CSV file where they feel like it sits the most. So we have rail references. So there is a CSV file within the Naptan CSV called rail references. So if people could put up a sticky and just say where they feel within that square where they feel rail references sits best for them. Hopefully this exercise is making sense to people. Oh, yes. So we've got one person putting it in. It's OK to have a monthly or less. So it's kind of in that lower priority corner. Um, is there anyone who has a disagreement with that? Is there anyone who's using it more often or needs needs this information more often? No problems. Uh, Dan. I'll just say that um, it's, they're quite, it's quite a static data set. So I'd say monthly or less, even monthly is, you know, more than regular enough, if that makes sense. So absolutely because because our references are static yeah that's good My, to know so the next just, one it's, i'm just going to give a context yep. on why that why that is low priority for us um we do cover rail but we find that the um there's another data source which is more reliable for rail data which is the um uh network rail corpus and so we get all the information that we need from that so um having the backup of having this data in that as well is less important to us than the bus data and that network rail corpus, and I'm assuming yeah. that's about like corpse, corpse, but yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. Um, does that does that also use like ecto codes and things like that, or is that a completely separate database that you need to link across somehow? Um, yeah, I'd have to I'd have to speak to the engineers to be entirely sure, but we have um, it's got its own primary referencing system, which it's it's got three or at least three different referencing systems which are only used in rail and aren't used in bus so um we get all of the information that we need for that so there's a three letter code which is the familiar code that we'd have for stations like pad for paddington um for the physical stations there's timing point codes for rail which have got their own referencing system and there's other the whole bunch of other codes that we don't need to discuss here as well but um they it can't that Corpus gives us everything we need, all of those references uh, for those different, um, let's call them, they're not even quite stations, they're kind of like the, the, the physical infrastructure points on the um, on the rail network. Cool. Tip lock codes yes. is basically the main things in the rail data. Tip top codes. Tip lock. Oh, tip lock. Thank you. I, um, Sorry, for those who aren't from New Zealand, Tip Top is a famous brand of ice cream there. Um, and there's, in fact, a corner on the New Zealand road that is known as Tip Top Corner because that's where the factory is. So local local information means a lot. Um, the next one to look at is coach references. So there's a coach references CSV file. Um, and just trying to understand what people's thoughts are on coach references and where you'd put it within the same block and in fact i'm going to be really helpful and i'll just create i'll just do that so that you can all move it and you don't have to try to type quickly in there if we could put that sticky somewhere within the block Everyone's very shy. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm assuming it's much the same as rail references, but I know that coaches and bus uh, buses kind of overlap a little bit. 
because there are some bus stops that are coach stops as well. Um, personally, we'd, we'd have it there because we download the coach data when we get download the um, uh, uh, bus data and load it at the same time. Uh, with this is timetables, mm -hmm. so, and to be entirely frank, I'm I'm not sure. I'd have to look in the code base to understand whether we um, get everything that we need from the, the bus stops file or the coach references file. Um, I can probably check that though. Yeah. Let me just. I'm just quickly making a, a note. Um, so the next one. On, on that side, I'm, just... I'm, I know that we yep. use the coach references when we when we build the coach data, which is probably something you like to hear. So we build the NCST mm -hmm. coach data for DFT. And we do use the coach references file for that, but I know it's not been we've not had any changes to that in about five years, so it's not a, right. it's not a frequently changing data set, should we say? Right, no, changing in the last five years is not frequent, not changed in the past five years. Although I get the sense that in the past year there's been more changes to a lot of this stuff than there's ever been. Um, now there's a there's a file that's literally just called stops.csv i'm going to look upon you to tell me what how useful this is to you because i struggling to understand how this how this fits into how people use it which one was that sorry it's just called stops.csv um and, and let me see if i can that's that's the one that's got all of the the call stop data in it that's the main one yeah that's the main one okay that that's stop, that, stop, yes. that's the daily one that we download access import that's got all the codes in it it's got all the location information in it that is uh that's the important stuff cool that's good to know um, the next one down is ferry references, which I'm sure is probably, I take it ferries change as little as rail and coach. Dan. Yeah, so the same, we, we don't really uh, use the actual lookup at all, we just use the ACCA code for the ferry data and the name that we get in the stops and we use that. We don't uh, use the ferry code or anything like that, we just use the, the main information from the stops. So stops, stops is far more important. Yeah. Uh, the next one down is called stops in area. Dot CSV. Now, I'm so, I, I wish I'd realised I should have probably had figured out a way to show you examples of these all, but I've just got them um, on my desktop at the moment. So there's something called stops in area. Does everyone know what this one is and do you use it at all? Tim. Uh, this is the link between... Um, um, stop areas and bus stops so it, it's got the center point for the uh for the stop areas in so some people will use it others won't it depends on the journey planner that they used to use or or application requirements okay so 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 stop scenario links the so this is stop areas and bus stop linkages yes and stop areas are not the same as national gazetteer areas yeah ah thank you whoever's moving that across thank you uh the next one is stop plus bus zones plus bus zones. Does anyone, uh, I literally, I can't even tell if that's supposed to be all one word or is, um, 
I'm just going to try to split it out into a couple of words so that it fits on the As I understand, a stop plus is a slightly different style of bus stop, or have I got that completely wrong and this is a slightly different thing? And Tim's going to give us all the explanation. So um, it's a plus bus zone, um, which is you can buy rail tickets that have um, a uh, the, the destination bus journey covered within them and that's a plus right. bus that's a plus bus zone um and so it's important for ticketing um and ticket machines i would have thought so uh david b and then dan yeah yeah so tim's right it it it's gonna help with bods for fares because it if you're working on the ticket machine is at this bus stop is it a, is it valid for a plus bus ticket to get on um, and if this is maintained properly then we've got something to reference other than just the operator's uh, idea of where he accepts plus bus fantastic and dan is yeah so it's similar kind of things we've used plus bus before uh but the issue with the stops is it gives the whole uh, story because a stop will say it's a plus bus, but you rely on an operator actually being part of the plus bus uh, region as well. So just because the stop is there, it doesn't include all the services that stop at that stop. Cool. So a plus bus zone needs to also include the operators that are part of the plus bus service. This is this is like tongue twisters written. <laughs> Um, okay, could somebody put that where they think it fits best on the map and I will go find the next file to look at. It sounds like it's useful to, especially for ticketing, it's just trying to figure out how, how often and when it would need to be updated, how, how often it changes. The next one is stop areas. So this is seems to be a CSV file of all of the different stop areas. David, or is that a legacy hand? David B, sorry. So it's okay to have, it's kind of linked to stop scenario um, and it's not, it's something you kind of want mm, weekly-ish, seems to be about right. Mark, Taylor. You, you're, you're still on mute. And then Andrew G. Um, yeah, hello. Sorry, I'll um, turn my... You go ahead, Mark. It's okay. Sorry, I had my, I keep turning my microphone off and forgetting to switch it back on. All I was going to say is, I think it's the, the stop areas file defines each individual stop area with a tech, with a with a um, a description. Then stops in area allocates the ATCO codes to those stop areas. It's it's like breaking down the data into into components, like a, like a relational database, but in CSV format. So it's as important for journey planners to have that with the stops, I would say. But that's just my Thank thought. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, and I understand that we're pulling apart the data. It's trying to find yes. the, the bit of this that's that's vital so that we can focus on making sure that, that we look at how we produce that um, as, the, as the highest value piece to do. Um, Andrew G. Um, I guess... What we do is, um, I guess, internally we call them bus stop clusters, but then we we create uh, we 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 translate that for Naptan into uh, stop areas, um, and we try and update it. It's quite a lot of stops to update, a lot of areas to update. But the big question is, does anyone actually use the stop areas? Um, is it valuable? Is it valuable to the to people who do journey planners? Um, that's the big question, really. 
because we can do it but if if there's not a value to it if other people are saying it's useless then we, we there might not be a point but it'd be good to know thank you that's thank you andrew you are asking the questions that that i'm looking to prompt as well keith uh yes sorry sorry yes uh, they are used in journey planners for, inter for interchanging between various services so they are important so they're used in journey planners for interchanges yes interchanges i'm just noting that down okay uh let me move on to the next one uh because we're only halfway through locality main access points locality main access points uh and Mm. Keith, uh, I'm assuming it's a legacy hand, but if you have any thoughts, I'd be I'd really like to hear them. But you're on mute. So I don't know what this file does. Um, uh, it seems to be the 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 bit that says within this area, this is the main points to get there but i don't understand how that differs too much from stop areas unless we they're used slightly differently within different journey planners i'm just trying to understand a little bit more about this mystery called nap -tab. dan yes i just want to say i don't think i've ever used that file before <laughs> Just to throw we, can, we, we, can, we can we can have a pile called uh. yeah i don't think i've ever, think I've ever used that file let me just put a little header here not used and um, what i might do is send out uh i'll i'll send out a questionnaire that asks a little bit more about this so that if you've got other things you can go and talk to your development teams and really understand if there's unexpected consequences or do you just not use this particular part of the csv file um, let me go to the next one which is called stop localities So this seems to be, I can't even figure out what this what this file does. It's got the stop, the nubtig code, so it seems to be a link between nubtig and acto codes. That's what it looks like when I go into the data. Does anyone use it? Is this is this something that people use? Is this something that is is useful? And I'm assuming either Dan, David M, or Keith will leap in and tell me. Uh, no, we're not using stop localities at the moment. Um, I've just been reviewing some of the files actually because we've, um, you know, we we see a lot of information in the Naptan file, and um, a lot of it we don't use. And as you say, I've speculated um, and looked at it and thought, well, this would be for the journey planner, uh, journey planning functions. Um, we get everything that we need from stop stop CSV. Mm. Uh, Tim. Yeah, Journey Planner suppliers use it quite extensively because it's the it is the link between stops and and local areas or localities. Sorry. So I think this is there is a uh, there's something in the coming up that I think means that we need to ensure that we get all of those different types of users into into a, a wider conversation um so there's a couple more to go there's one called air references um does anyone use this i, I believe that it's airports Tim, I see you're 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 quickly organising all of this. Well, it's 
it's exactly the same as Ferry and Coates references. It doesn't change very often, but it's a needed thing if you're wanting to route people to airports. Um, the the yeah. main observation I've got on way up, the rail references, ferry references, and coach references, and it might be the same for air references as well, is that it looks they look like a subset of all the information that's already in stops.csv. So we do have we do include ferry stops, coach stops. Um, we can access the rail stops um, and any other modes, prime and everything. But it yeah. seems to be a subset. <laughs> Sorry, did I? Have I <laughs> was I being boring? Um, so no, no, no. Uh, I think. I think it's I, I think it's fine. I think it's one of the things of we know a little bit about how this is put to okay, we know how this is put together. We know from Tim and from the the structure how this is put together, but understanding how it's used is far more important for us right now. Um Alex R. Yes, I was just checking on airports. I was looking at uh, in particular Blue Star bus, one of our clients in Southampton. And I noticed that in the in the stops data, we've got enough data there to route people to airports. So we've not got a requirement for the airport data. So so these are effectively we've pulled stuff out and it's been put separate. But because it already exists in the stop data, people are almost no no longer needing it pulled out. Dan. Yeah, so the airport data itself uh, it reference, references the actual airport itself. Um, which you don't really do a lot of journey planning to the airport. You do the journey planning to the coach station at the airport or the tube station at the airport or something like that. And that's the stuff that I find more useful to utilise. However, in the past, we have had some data uh, in the TNDS that was a plane that went from Anglesey Island to somewhere in Wales. Um, and that was coded as a public transport service and that used the airport codes. And that file was then useful because it contained the short code, like LGW's London Gatwick, for example. And so that file was quite useful to, to link the main uh, yeah, code to, the, to the, the airport code. So there was literally a public transport plane. I am discovering so many cool things. This was, um, this was I'm years now going to, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it exists I'm now anymore. going to hunt down. I'm now going to go hunt down public transport plane. Um, the next file that we've got is something called alternative descriptors. Does anyone use this? And is it is it something that you use often? And just to try to give an idea of what it is. It's it's kind of giving some of the landmarks, I believe. But that it's not widely used. Dan. Yes, yeah, so we've looked at this before, but we didn't find it very useful. So I think we have a big issue sometimes uh, with Naptan and stop names reference something that no longer exists, like a pub that shut down years ago or something like that. So we thought this might be a good file to utilise to find out actually is it linked to a different name or something like that? Um, but we couldn't quite make any use of it out of it. Um, Mark, Mark T. You're still on mute. Is that better? Right. It, it, the alternate descriptor is as useful as the people who create the data make use of that field. So potentially it is useful. But if there's no need to use an alternate descriptor, then it won't be filled in. Does that make sense? I, I totally understand. Uh, what I'm trying to understand from the downloader's perspective mm. is, is this something that that's of real value to them? Well, they won't know until they look focus? at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to put that down into the not not used and we can ask some deeper questions on it. There's now a couple more to go through. Um, there's one called Hail Ride, which I'm assuming is the the Hail and Ride areas for particular um, particular sections of the roads and things like that. Um, is this used by anyone in your systems, Dan S? Uh, I don't think it's actually populated in the data. When I've downloaded it before, it's been blank. Okay, 
I'm not sure if anyone else is that's just when I downloaded it and looked at ages ago, it was blank and still that's blank. Me. Okay, <laughs> thanks. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's still blank. Um, it's a known bug in the current Naptown export soft database at the DFT. It was raised okay. years ago when Miles was doing the development, and um, I don't think it ever got properly addressed. Uh, Obviously oh, didn't if it's blank. <laughs> uh, weirdly enough, in downloading just an area, so I downloaded which uh, 038. I don't know who 038 is, but I downloaded 038. Um, just randomly chose them. So they their hail and ride is actually populated. So it might be a national a national data problem, and maybe that's something that we can look into. But I'll add that to um, our backlog our backlog list and I'll just put a I'll put it under not to use but I've made a note it's a known bug for national uh, next one just trying to move through these there's one called area hierarchy okay I'll make it two words uh, hierarchy you will now get to see how badly I spell. Um, I don't know what this does. Um, I, I'm guessing it's saying which areas are nested within which areas and, and gives you some kind of Russian doll parent-child relationships. Um, is this useful for, for, for anybody and is this used? Or is this something that you generate yourself from the stops data? Tim. Journey planners use it. Journey planners, yeah. I was about to say, and we're going to find out it's all about journey planning. Um, Tim, I will trust you to throw it somewhere on this grid that that makes sense for the journey planners. The next one is called Stop Availability. I don't know what this is about uh, because where I got it, from is blank. So does anyone use this? Has anyone had a non-blank version of this? Yes, there is. A, the, it used to, to be non-blank. Um, I think that's a bug again um, that's been more recently introduced. Um, you can mark stops as only available during the summer or um, not available for a month or something if there's roadworks and things like that. Okay. okay. So this is like, for example, when Moorgate Station was being redeveloped for two years, you could have used the stop availability to indicate that those stops were just not going to be around for the next two years. Yes. Yeah. It would be interesting to know whether anybody actually uses this data and it'd be interesting i think that'd be a good one to take to the journey plans as well sorry i didn't mean to talk over no it's okay uh it's a, a dave mountain from transport api here uh we that is a problem um, but it's a problem we solve in a different way um so rather than using that file to decide whether we should um be including that bus stop in different contexts we one of the additional checks that we use as well as the status of that stop from the stop csv file uh we also check whether it currently has any scheduled departures from it in the time frame for which we're loading the data and we can flag that as kind of yes or no and then we can make decisions in different contexts as well whether we do want to show that stop or not so it, it's kind of uh, it's a different way of calculating stop availability rather than looking in that file and saying it says the stop's available it says the stop isn't we're looking at it and saying is there anything is are there any departures from that stop or are there not and, and using it so that... basically basically the same uh, solve the same problem yeah it's almost a chicken and the egg because you're looking for departures from a stop that might not actually be there. So there's a can you depart from a stop that's pending and, and a whole pile of interesting data questions between BODs and NAPTAN that, that, that need to be looked at there. Because that's if you pinned a bus stop in NAPTAN, should that pend in BODs or could you still have things leaving from a stop that is pending and vice versa? I just data matching. Um, 
where should we put that? Where should we put this? That needs to go under not used because while we you, while we'd like to use it, it's broken at the moment, so it is something that that could be useful. Does that I, seem like a reasonable point? I, I, I just want to add. Um, so there's a disruptions API. Um, I think it's working in the north at the moment. It might be rolled out across. It might also take some of that load. So that's saying like is this, you know uh, is something going wrong at the moment uh, and that's more of a live feed this is more of like a you know a long-term planning things so i think it needs to work you know maybe alongside that or maybe that replace it i don't know brilliant thank you um alex yeah i i, echo, uh, what and dan, Andrew. I, I echo what dan says in that i think stop availability is more suited to a real-time system where someone is able to say this stop is not available today, for example, or for the next hour, as opposed to having it in a more static data set like Naptam. So, so um, in that stop availability for the next hour or so, could you also, would you also want things that would indicate the stop is not available until from um, December until May? because it we just don't run that service because there's nobody around it's the back end of nowhere um for us no because we have our own disruption service so our operators can do that already so mm -hmm. there's no requirement for us to do that cool so that's really good to understand um uh, andrew g um yeah i can confirm that yeah across and off um we've got um the disruptions feed and there's that functionality that we can basically say to we, we can put a stop on a route to say it's not available because of engine road works whatever so it we we would prefer um well stop availability yeah it's it's i don't think it's as valuable as it was thank you gotcha much. because it's been a bit more superseded yeah brilliant okay. um we've got two two more to go there's one called Metro references. I'm guessing this is for trams. If anyone wants to, and I'm assuming that it sits down with the rest of the references files. It's held and stops, but it's this is that subset of the tram data. Uh, Sounds yeah, reasonable. My, yeah, I think it's also it might be broken as well. I think it might be empty, but yeah, um, we. We can get all the information we need, including the stop type and stops. So the subsets of different modes uh, aren't important to us. Um, um, yeah, I haven't been right through absolutely every um, a column to see if there's some little gem in there, as there appears to be for uh, air references in, in these different ones. But certainly, we're not taking anything else from them. And that is true for Metro references, as it is all the other mode reference files. Brilliant. And there's one last one. So thank you all for your patience and going through the fine the fine detail here. There's a last one called flexible. Yeah, it's just called flexible.csv. Um, I'm assuming this is. I, I it literally don't know because the version I've got has no data in it. Tim, I'm assuming it's used by journey planners. Uh, well, it is, and it's used for flexible zones. Um, so, um, if you've got something like a demand responsive service, um, that picks up and sets down in, in an area that, uh, there was a concept 15 years ago of flexible routes, um, where you would have a predefined section of route. So it always went down the high street, but then it wandered around an estate picking people up like a demand responsive service. Um, it's partly this was partly designed to cover those flexible areas. Um, it's probably not very much used at the moment, but um, there's a number of authorities that are actively looking at bringing back flexible routes. So this is the this idea is almost like that uberfication of buses of like if you're if you're within this area you can request a bus and a bus will swing past and we'll give you the time the bus is going to swing past and pick you up and take you to the high street or something like that but there's not a regular running every 20 minutes type bus 
Uh, no, right. so it's so th there is a guaranteed bit of route with right. fixed with fixed times, but the start and the end of the route, for example, might vary depending on who's wanting to get it. Ah, so it's different to the uberfication ones that somebody talked about, and we need to go and ask more about this to understand how it would fit within. Net ten, or how those areas would need to be indicated. Um, yeah, you would use for for those sort of demand responsive, the uberfication type stuff. Um, you might choose to use flexible, but there's other ways of dealing with it. Excellent. Um, we have done super fast time through this because we put aside two hours and we've got through in about ninety minutes through all of the important stuff that I needed to get through. So I'm going to quickly do what's coming up. And then if anyone wants to dive into something deeper or something like that, we've got the time or we can all just get half an hour of our lives back, um, whichever people prefer. So I'm just quickly going to go through. I'll just put flexible just kind of vaguely in there because we will need to figure a bit more out about it. So coming up, what we're going to do in the next meetings that we set up with PICT is we're going to talk about the strategy for NAPTAN and NUPTIC, the long-term strategies, what we're imagining, what we're working towards, and also some of the smaller bits. Um, we're, we're thinking about doing a special interest group for the CSV files because we want to get down into the nitty gritty of do you does anyone actually use this column? Is this column of value? Do we still need to produce it? This column seems to be co combining two columns or is calculated from this. Is it better to present you this from the XML or ca continue to calculate it? There's a number of really super geeky questions and nerdy questions we're going to get into. Um, rather than get a big group like this, we'd rather just have a little special interest group of three or four people that we can sit down, we can sit, have lots of email and chat conversations with. Um, and one of the other things is we want to recruit for some testers. So, um, and I know that we've done some user testing before, but we want to come along and sit with you and ask you lots of questions and show you some stuff and do this on a regular basis over the next uh, 12 weeks or so to really make sure that what we build is going to be of the most value to the most people possible. We want to make sure that the effort that we're putting in is actually really, really delivering some value. Um, because sometimes just doing what we've done, we're going to do stuff that's actually not as useful. or And we want to make sure that the stuff that we do, people are like, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to happen. Um, and lastly, who to contact about things. Um, me, for anything to do with these meetings, give me feedback on them. Tell me the stuff that you really like. Tell me stuff that you'd like to see. Tell me stuff that you that um, you'd like me to change. Um, talk to Adrian Falconer about the rebuilt Naptan product and service um, or project and service. So this is about taking Naptan and making it better and I won't say sexier, but um, better. Um, and Ursuline is the service owner and he's the person to contact about the current system. And you can get to that via the nat 10 nubtig email address or you can email Ursuline and we'll put all of those details out. Um, so is there anything else that people want to discuss here? I'm more than happy to sit and spend the next half hour talking through a fine tooth comb detail about anything if anyone needs it. Dan. Uh, timelines really is when you know we've got timelines of when things looking to change or anything like that at all. Um, so this is a part, I, I'm just looking at Adrian, but he's, his video isn't on. So I'm going to take a bit of a okay. punt. And as a service designer, I'm not allowed to give punts and dates. So I'm looking at my product owner to do, to do such things. Um, I don't think we, um, we haven't got any hard and fast uh, timelines at the moment. We're working through, um, We've done some work thinking about strategy in the last few weeks, and we're in the middle of just a, a, a bit of a planning phase um, for this year, for the work this year. I think anything that we do in the first instances will be 
really low impact. So we'll build a, a parallel service to the existing thing and test it out with people. So, and that's what we'll be doing, but sort of hopefully by March, April, we'll have something up and running that we'll be able to share with anyone, but we'll just concentrate on just a few people um, just to see how that works. And then if that does work well, then come the summer, we'll look to start to think about how we start to evolve people onto the new system. Um, so having the download available for anybody that's interested, um, but then focusing more on the uploaders towards the summer so that we can actually get the, you know, all of the data that we need into, into the newer version before we think about, you know, we're, we're a long way off thinking about switching anything off. Okay. Just to settle any nerves that we're going to make people's <laughs> lives difficult um, unnecessarily. Um, so yeah, so we, you'll hopefully see activity which doesn't concern you necessarily, but you know we'll keep you informed before anything happens that will actually seriously affect anyone. Okay, great, thank you. Um, um, Alex, oh. hello. Yes. Um, the only other thing I want to ask about is feedback. So. From a consumer's point of view, it's pretty much a dead end in terms of we've got data quality issues or there's an update that we could potentially make. Um, being, being at the end of this kind of pipeline, we often have data that is better quality than NAPTAN. So is there ever going to be an opportunity for some kind of either feedback or the ability for us to update the data set? Um, that's a really, really interesting question. And um, I'd like to sit down and have a chat about what, how, how you've got higher quality data and how we can make NAPTAN the, the solid goldest of solid gold data because yep. it needs to be because it builds on so many things are built on it. So it'd be really good to understand that. And I'd love to set aside an hour or so and just come and talk through that with you if that would be handy. Yes, that's absolutely fine. Um, David M. Or Dave And you're on mute. Thank you. Sorry, I was whittering away. Um, yes, I think some of the technical detail would be really good to get onto. Um, I think the biggest beef that we have and the comments that we come back from a lot of uh, clients are that the names vary across different systems. and. Uh, I think that we've reached the point where we realize we, we can't vary anything to match them all. We, we need some more canonical rules or, or either fields or rules. So a, a, a standardized way of coming up with the name we should use in different contexts. Um, and common name you think would be it, but actually you need to combine it with lots of different things. And we've seen that every, every different service combines it in a different way and every different data producer expects it to be used in a sort of different way. Uh, in some regions, they have a policy of uh, where possible, we'll have um, a stop name will be composed, we should be composed of like the main road and the road it intersects with El elsewhere. It will be, uh, might be the road, uh, um, road name indicator and a landmark and people have got very different regions of very precise ideas in terms of the producers of what that should be and then the consumers are trying to put all this together um and it isn't obvious and it isn't easy i had a quick look to see how many distinct indicators there were for instance because you think well i'll know what to do with the word opposite or something and there were fourteen thousand distinct <laughs> indicators so that would be a lot of business rules to account for so i think if there was some wow. way of no yeah yeah some way of knowing how they should all be put together um, and, you know, the majority of those are things that shouldn't have gone in there, but, um, yeah, it's difficult to know, you know, what to do with an indicator op or opposite and especially when it's expressed in 10 or 15 different ways. And, um, yeah, I would love, I think we'd all love it as consumers to say, if you're going to put this on a bus stop, use this name, if it's appearing as a calling point on a, on a, um, uh, on a bus, a list of bus stops, use this name, uh, et cetera. We'd love that because it would take that all up trying to, um, all the different approaches that we have of trying to come up with the best name away from us and put it in the hands of the producers. So that's a really long, a long winded thing. I think it's probably going beyond the scope of this actually. Uh, and uh, because that isn't really how that time set up, but um, perhaps the, the rules by which we could generate those names consistently. So all our services use the same ones would be great. I think that's a really interesting point to do. And, and I know that common names is and and the naming conventions is something that there's quite a lot of rules around all, all already and i think i 
I'm guessing from this that there's almost a need for a little special interest group talking around from both the consumers and the producers of common names to have a little discussion about what the differences are and what what some of the issues are because we know that some bus stops are just a stretch of road or a stretch of road maybe with a pole on it and some bus stops are a TFL joined on a shelter with all the different bits of street furniture around it and the differences not only with those physicalities but also with what they're called locally like you know it's called the Johnson's farm even though the Johnson's sold the farm 50 years ago the stop will constantly be known as Johnson's farm um, there's a beach near where I grew up called Duda's Beach. It's now actually known by a Māori name, but everyone who, who I know still calls it Duda's Beach. Even though the Duda's left it 50 years ago, it just became the name of the beach. And it's kind of one of those things where the local name and the common name and what's it called just don't make sense. And we need to find a way to move forward with that. Does that sound a reasonable thing to do? Just maybe have a really big discussion about it it might not impact on that tan now but maybe in the future i i think it'd be a useful thing to do perhaps even just it feels like it's reached the point where it's been very flexible and it's accommodate lots of different different people's needs but that's made it perhaps made it a, a, a little bit too diverse in what it does it kind of needs almost that benign dictatorship to come along and say <laughs> if you are gonna you know if you're gonna use the word opposite use it as an indicator use it this way and then a hierarchy of uh, take this approach to com formulate the name first if that doesn't work this one if that one doesn't work this one and i think that would give some consistency in the output that the traveling public are getting and if they're looking at the, the name for stop and they're looking on their phone and looking at it in the street they want them to be they want to be able to match them across at least in their head yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think one of the things that I've understood looking at some of the rules and some of the data and some of the, the way the rules are applied is that there's been drift, like, and I know Tim and everyone probably set something up 15 years ago, but there's been drift across everybody has kind of drifted ever so slightly or come up with local conventions, which, and it's a matter of just kind of bringing everyone back together and resetting what those conventions are a little bit in the modern world with smartphones and dynamic bus indicators and all of those things, which are quite different funky technologies we might not have had 15 years ago or we thought about but didn't know when it would come in. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to go through? Anyone, anyone wants to discuss? I will take silence and a lack of hands as no. Then I will just thank everybody for their time and energy and thoughts and interactions today. I really appreciate it. I know asking you to take two hours out of your day to come and have a geeky discussion about the depths of a CSV file. CSV files is asking a lot, but I really, really appreciate the time and the energy that everyone's put in. Just thank, you. Say thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, Thanks for coming. Thank Cheers.